There's not much of an association between the classic image of a Viking, big and strong with a horned helmet and a massive beard, and a stereotypically Scottish musical instrument. What I'm trying to say is, when you think of Vikings, you probably don't think of bagpipes. So why are there bagpipes in How to Train Your Dragon? A series about Vikings and dragons. I mean, these Vikings are Scottish, but they're still Vikings. Morning. Apparently bagpipes aren't even that Scottish. Well, they are very Scottish, but they're not exclusive to Scotland or Ireland. It turns out there's around 130 types from around Europe, Asia, and even Africa from various time periods. But the closest connection I could find to Vikings is that they played hornpipes, which are similar to bagpipes. So naturally, the use of bagpipes in this series has confused a lot of critics and fans over the years. Which has led to a couple theories why composer John Powell chose the instrument. I'll go over a couple theories here, and as always, I prefer to base my own ideas off what the composer himself has said. First, I found a theory in this review of the Hidden World soundtrack. The writer noticed an absence of bagpipes from the movie, and suggested they could have been an instrumental motif for the Vikings' old ways. The ways of fighting and killing dragons. You probably saw the movie. When I found this review, I thought it was a really interesting idea, but it doesn't hold up because there are bagpipes in the third movie. In fact, it's the same group that recorded for the second movie, a group called the Red Hot Chili Pipers. The second theory comes from the music YouTuber Sideways. He latched onto the whole hero's journey aspect of the movie and the known versus the unknown worlds. Meaning, what's familiar to Hiccup is the ways of the Vikings, and he learns throughout the movie about the dragons. So he basically took the same idea of an instrumental motif and went the opposite direction. He seems to think the bagpipes exclusively represent the dragons, as this foreign, wild, and ethnic element of the score. Despite being the opposite idea, it fits equally well into the context of the movies. Because wherever you find the Vikings fighting the dragons, well, of course you'll find the dragons. And even though I think it's another interesting idea, even he admits that sometimes he kind of goes out on a limb with his theories. I do think that's how they're used to an extent, but maybe not so strictly. Or at least there's more to them than he covered in his video. And mainly, it doesn't seem to be quite what Powell had in mind for the bagpipes, based off what he's actually said about it. According to Powell, the Highland Pipes, which are the famous Scottish bagpipes, used to be British war pipes meant to frighten the Scots. Although something tells me, maybe it didn't work? He's actually spoken directly about the bagpipes a couple of times, especially in this interview on the Trailer Addict website. But they've become sort of key sounds that you, you try and use. The Highland Pipes were one of the only instruments I know of that were entirely based on trying to frighten people. They are, you know, an instrument of war to create uh, fear in the enemy at a distance. So that's why they're incredibly loud. They're also pretty restrictive instruments. They can't play spaces between the notes, and they're pretty fixed at a rather loud volume. This information comes from... musicologist John Powell. These are two different people. One of them has a PhD in physics. So there are two different John Powells from London who have taken the time to explain the history and usage of bagpipes. That's interesting. Anyway, they can be partially restrained with a mute, like other wind instruments, or in the case of How to Train Your Dragon, they can be recorded separately and edited in the mix, so they can be made softer. Sometimes it can even be difficult to notice them, or to be sure if they play in that cue. Like in Test Drive, they're not written into the score sheets, but they do play the melody with the woodwinds and violins. So 
so the best way to show how Powell actually uses the bagpipes is to show them in context of the story. And a perfect example is Dragon Training. The scene opens with the teenage Viking stepping into the ring for the first time. We hear the low brass, the male voices, and a variation of the Vikings theme that typically represent the Vikings. And the bagpipes play on top of it. This is their first real step into the war, so when they step in, we hear the war pipes. This is a huge part of their culture and tradition. It's kind of what they do on Burke. And all those elements of the score are used to convey that in this moment. Once the dragon is let loose, the bagpipes lose all their subtlety. They become much louder and more aggressive. Another great example is Ready the Ships. Stoic captures Toothless and attacks the dragon's nest. The horns play the Vikings theme as a march, and again the bagpipes come in as war pipes, all of which conveys they're literally going to war. But if you know this music well, you might already know that the pipes don't always play aggressively. They don't always correlate with war, violence, or fear. Sometimes they play more peacefully, or even joyfully, and there are easily plenty of examples throughout the series. There's a historical reason for this, too. But then, somewhere along the lines, musicians being musicians have turned them into actually a very joyful instrument. The fun thing on the first movie was that I was using pipes in a very celebratory way. In the opening of the second movie, the Highland Pipes return, still playing joyfully. And for the first time in the series, Illin Pipes are introduced, which are Irish bagpipes meant for playing indoors. Those Illin Pipes are introduced here, in what sounds almost like a guitar solo. It's also pretty fun that these instruments of war play in this friendly but aggressive competition. For the sequels in general, both kinds of pipes are still pretty prominent. I think you can even hear them when they sing for the dancing and the dreaming. And love me for eternity. However, there is a turning point in the second movie, where the pipes play just as they were originally intended to. There's one particular moment where the bagpipes, the Highland pipes, you know, really get used in a, a medieval way. They're actually very, very, very threatening. In a way, the bagpipes kind of musically match Drago's war cry here. And the Illin pipes join in right when he starts hypnotizing Toothless. The following scene is a funeral. Stoic was always a warrior, and he died on the battlefield. And bagpipes traditionally play at the funerals for police officers, soldiers, and fallen heroes in general.
This is why they're also considered to be very sad and emotional instruments. There's one more reason for why Powell chose bagpipes. I think it's really a passion of his. Let me explain. If you didn't already know, he really is the perfect choice of a composer for this series. He loves animation, he was asked to write a very thematic score, which is his favorite music to write and what he's probably best at. He grew up listening to Scottish and Celtic folk music. And he loves exoticism and interesting and ethnic sounds. I think this is the main reason for the bagpipes and the Irish drums, the slate marimbas and forbidden friendship, the reason for the Celtic harp in the second and third movies, or maybe even both instruments at once. Now obviously, he's not the only composer to use instruments from outside the conventional orchestra. But it's something he loves, and it's definitely a strong part of his signature that you can find in pretty much everything he's done. A lot more than I'm actually going to go into detail with here, but just to name a few. He used Vuvuzelas, these horns that crowds play at South African soccer games, in a Star Wars movie. He's known for his use of percussion, like the big drums in Test Drive. So when he did the movie Drumline, he fell in love with the drumlines of American universities. And he's incorporated that sound into a few of his movies since then. In How to Train Your Dragon, you can hear it in See You Tomorrow and in the end credits. I think my favorite example of all of them is how he used kazoos in Chicken Run. And I just found out there's a few seconds of bagpipe in Chicken Run? This looks pretty weird without context. And of course, one of his most popular scores is Kung Fu Panda, which he did with Hans Zimmer. This was also a DreamWorks project, just a couple years before How to Train Your Dragon. And obviously, this movie provided a lot of opportunities for the use of exotic instruments. I find that he really just treats the exotic instruments as another part of the orchestra. Sometimes they get solos, and sometimes they play with everyone else. And they're pretty much always there in some form for his projects. As for the bagpipes, they play in a very wide variety of situations, and they bring out a wide variety of emotions. Although they're not very historically accurate to Vikings, they still add a lot of power and joy to the score. And of course, it acts as a unique musical trademark for both John Powell and the score itself. Hey, thanks for watching, and you can find my sources in the description. Special thanks to Scenes and Scores for most of the clips. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this, and let me know what you think. Did I get something wrong? I'm not an expert. Let me know in the comments, and thanks again for watching.